class. Class, quiet down. Quiet down. Charlie, please put the phone away. And Kyle, could you not fart on? Never mind. Mr. White, Mr. White, is it true that Mr. McCracken got fired for pooping in the urinal? No, Andrew. Mr. McCracken was not fired for pooping in the urinal. He farted on a student. That class is what we call a myth. And speaking of myths, I hope you all brought in your permission slips. Because today, we're talking about... Greek mythology. Now, now, I promise it's very exciting. There's gods. There's heroes. And there's lots and lots of sex and violence. Oh, he's a sex. Boobies. Wait, did he say sex? sex? Oh my god. He's a sex? It's a world where fathers eat their sons, and sons chop off their father's ability to make more sons. Yes, Kyle. What does that mean? It means they chopped off their balls. And speaking of balls, I'm gonna need those permission slips right now. Think of it as a sacrifice to Zeus, your penance to come to the party. Yes, John. Yeah, I forgot my permission slip. Can I just stay though? I mean, it can't be that bad, right? It's that bad. Um, I'm gonna need you, sadly, to leave the room. Um, just go make a TikTok or something, I don't know. Norse myth is better anyway. <laughs> and that class is Greek mythology. It all began with a great belch. <laughs> Chaos burped, and out tumbled the primordial beings. First there was Erebus, and Nyx, then Gaia and Tartarus, and finally, Eros, love, who quickly inspired his siblings to get busy and multiply. Hey sis, we should like, totally have sex. You had me at sex, I mean sis. As Erebus and Nyx would couple to create Hemera and ether, which means somebody is cheating. And now despite being separated from time itself, these beings were not without motivations, desires, and egos. Nyx hated pudding, Tartarus loved cheese, and Gaia, well, Gaia deeply desired to be a mother, but there was a problem, a small yet large problem. Her only sex options were, well, seven beings. Scratch that, seven family members. And so after about seven swipes on Tinder saying no, no, gross, and no, Gaia said, Damn it! Where are all the hot, sexy singles? Did I hear someone say hot, sexy singles? You want to take a ride on the love train? Don't be gross, Eros. We're siblings. But Erebus and Nyx had sex and it was like totally cool. Yeah, but they're twins. It's totally different. True. So what are you gonna do? I'm gonna do it the old fashioned way. Guy would produce two suns, Pontus the sea and Uranus the sky. And remember all that stuff like two sentences ago about incest being gross? Well, desperate times call for desperate measures because Uranus, the son of Gaia, had a big 
problem. A very, very large problem. Uranus, like most penis-wielding beings, was horny, and as we've established, sexual options were limited, so he turned his insatiable desire towards the only logical option according to Greek myth. His hand? His mother. Fair enough. The roundness of her hips, the way she rotated her blue and green skin all drove Uranus crazy. And so he said, Hey mom, I know you're like a planet and stuff, but wouldn't it be crazy if we like had sex? <sighs> Don't be gross, Uranus. I'm your mother. But mom, what am I supposed to do about this? All right, come to mama. And so Uranus would proceed to mate with his mother Gaia. I mean, the sky it does cover the earth after all. Oh, Jesus! Oh, God, why? Wait, what's a god? And from this horrific union came a parade of new beings. Twelve titans, three cyclopses, and the uh, disgusting Hecaton Kiri, a giant, fifty-headed, hundred-handed abominations. And these hideous children filled Uranus with so much shame. So much disgust that the sky grew a deep, embarrassed red that day, uh, leaving Uranus with two options. Option one, be a man, even though men didn't yet exist. Or option two, take the children into his soft, supple hands made of cloud and body slam them back into Gaia's womb. Wait, what? Ernest? Ernest, have you seen the chil- Oh, thank God they're with you. Give them to mother so I can feed them and stuff. Ernest? Ernest, are you listening to me? What have I done? You are a sinner. What have I done? You're a sinner, Ernest. They're monstrous. Think, Ernest. Destroy them, Ernest. The seed of Ernest is spoiled. Kill them all. Ernest, are you listening huh? to me? What? Oh, mother. I'm sorry. Ah! Ernest grabbed the great Hecaton Kiri, and with the entire weight of the sky behind him, he slammed them back into Gaia's womb. Ouch! Gaia writhed in pain at the physics-defying crime, as Ernest wiped his hands clean and proceeded to do more sky stuff. <sighs> gotcha. But this crime would not go unpunished, for in the excruciating pain of anti-birth, Gaia had an epiphany. An idea so devious, so ballsy that it might just work. Perfect. And so the first ever revenge plot was born. Gaia would seek aid from her other children, the Twelve Titans, to overthrow their father. First she tried Hyperion. No good. Next was Atlas. It's a no. Perhaps Phoebe? Slam. Eleven times Gaia asked, and eleven times she was denied. And depressed she became, and the globe started to look a little more blue. Yet hope still remained, for she had but one child left to approach. A dark child, and a devious child. Kronos. Ah, mother, you're looking round. Ah, Kronos, my favorite son and the most beautiful and powerful of the titans. Yes, yes, what do you want? Might we talk inside first? There fell ears abroad. All right, now that we're safe, I'd like you to consider a bit of an odd request. Now I know your first instinct is going to be refusal because he's your father and all. But what if we chopped off his balls and overthrew him? I'm in. Well, I don't know about the whole 
chopping of balls thing. I was thinking more just, you know, your standard overthrow and in prison. It will be chopping of the balls or it will be nothing, mother. Chopping it is. Kronos and Gaia would team up to take down Uranus, but first they needed a plan. You can't just go swinging at the sky, and so Gaia urged trickery in lieu of brute force, and she knew exactly what to do. Dude. I'm getting sexy. Gaia would utilize her greatest asset, her sexy body with its perfect 88 waist and water to land ratio to entice Ernest to mount her once again, but this time, Kronos would lay in waiting and watch. Get out of here! And once Uranus was at his most vulnerable, Kronos would leap out from the shadows and slice the very manhood that produced him. But to slice, you need something sharp. Uh, perhaps a sword? Too heavy. Maybe a spear? Can't slice. Oh my Jesus? What is that? It's perfect. The curvature of the blade. The sharpness of the edge, this weapon was born for balls, so Kronos would grab the great diamond sickle and ready himself for surgery. Hey there, big guy. I mean, Sky. You want to take a ride on the Global Express? What? You're my mother. Of course I want to have sex. Ah, oh, gross. So gross. But I can't. I can't look away. I just whip it out already. And I spoke too soon. Alright, this. Oh, my balls! My beautiful, cloudy balls. Wow, <laughs> these balls are surprisingly light. Imagine how far I could throw these. Suck my dick, Kronos. Oh, Papa, you don't have a dick anymore. With a single great swipe of his sickle, Kronos struck down his father Uranus. Yet amidst Kronos's triumphant cries, his doom would be spoken, for Uranus would lay a curse upon his son, saying, Kronos, worst of my children and usurper to my throne, hear me now, for I curse you to the same fate you've lain upon me. Your children shall usurp your throne, and your balls are will be devoured by ants, only to be regrown and devoured again. It's gonna be super painful and totally embarrassing, and everyone's gonna laugh at you. Oh! Dick, let's say what? What? Exactly. And thus the cycle of patricide was born, and with daddy's dong nuggets in his hand, Kronos did the only sensible thing. He cast them into the ocean. It would be the first ever instance of pollution. As Uranus's genitals leaked into the ocean, creating a concoction of blood, seed, and water, which bore many a new creation. Creatures like the Furies, the Gigantes, Nymphs, and even Aphrodite, which means from the foam. Gross. Aphrodite would go on to become the goddess of sex, passion, and love. But back to our story where Kronos has banished Uranus to Tartarus to live out his days in shame. And now, the sky throne laid bare for Kronos' butt. These spoils of war were his to claim, and none dared challenge him and his mighty nut-chopping sickle. And to stay consistent with his incestual birth, he would marry his sister Rhea. And life... Well, life was good. Kronos and Rhea would blissfully live out their lives atop Mount Othrius, and the two would live happily ever 
after wait a minute Rhea? yeah you're looking awfully um how do i put this gently preggers hey fuck you dick you just said we were supposed to live happily ever after oh my god it's a baby and a beautiful baby at that what should we name her chronos Kronos? Kronos? Kronos, are you listening to me? Your children will usurp you. You shall lose your throne. The prophecy will be fulfilled, the children. It will be the chance. Ants. Ants. They're gonna eat your dick. The ants are gonna eat your dick and it's gonna hurt. People are gonna laugh at you. Kronos. 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 Huh? What? What do you think of the name Hestia? A beautiful name for a beautiful baby girl. Oh my god, Kronos! What the fuck? Wait, was I... Was I not supposed to do that? I'm sorry. I promise, my love, it will never, ever happen again. Oh! Another baby! You're gonna eat it, aren't you? Yep. The prophecy of Uranus echoed in Cronus's ear, who decided devouring his own children was the only sensible option, and it worked. The throne was secured, and the power was his. Yet with time, the poisons of that very power began to corrupt Cronus's mind. Shadows haunted his thoughts as paranoia pushed him towards madness, leading to isolation and a deep mistrust of all around him. Hmm. How do I know this isn't poisoned? You take the first bite. But sir, I'm a vegan. And baby isn't animal meat. Fair enough. It's poisoned. Kronos would go on to devour five of his children. Hestia, Hera, Demeter, Hades, and Poseidon. And each child that filled his belly filled Rhea with more hatred. The incestual love she once felt had fled, and in its place grew anger and vengeance. Are you seeing a pattern? So Rhea sought the two other beings with the most experience in the vengeance department. Two beings who hated Kronos almost as much as her. Uranus and Gaia. And there, in the pits of Tartarus, they hatched yet another brilliantly devious plan. Mama. Papa. Kronos is such a brute. He's eaten all our children, and he's constantly burping. Oh, boo-hoo! He's eating your children. He cut off my balls! My balls! Do you know how big the sky's balls are? Don't you mean were? Yes, and they're huge. Settle down, Uranus. Jesus. I know exactly what to do. You see this? Yeah? This is called a rock. Okay. And do you notice its shape? It's a... Uh, it's round? And do you know what else is round? Balls? Babies. So here's what we do. We take this rock, we give it a face and we dress it up in baby's clothes and we give this to Kronos instead of the actual baby. It's a classic baby swap. Easy peasy. So we bet our lives on dressing a rock up like a baby and then hoping that Kronos is dumb enough to eat a rock? I love it. Hey, can you guys like free me? Shut, Shut up, up dickless. And so Operation Rock Baby was a go. Rock, check. 
Clothes? Check. Marker? Check. Now all we need is a baby. But where do babies come from? Oh, right. Gross. And so Rhea did the naughty with Kronos and once again got pregnant. Months passed, and Rhea's belly grew and grew until that fateful, painful day came. Delivery day. Ding, ding, ding. The dinner bells rang in Kronos' ear as he heard Rhea's labor pains in the distance. Kronos licked his lips and grabbed his favorite bib and slowly ascended from his throne with one direction in mind. That way, towards Rhea. Rhea? Rhea? Where are you? Kronos? My love? You've come just in time. I've just given birth to a beautiful baby rock. I, I mean, boy. Yes, yes, just give it to me. I'm famished. Wait, what was that about a rock? Hmm? Nothing? Mm-hmm. How do I know it's not poisoned? It's a baby. It's not vegan food. Fair enough. <laughs> that was... absolutely delicious. What have you been eating? Babies? Kronos took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, swallowing the rock without a second thought. And for now, he was appeased. His belly was full and his digestion was ruined. Uh, but wait a minute. Aren't we forgetting something? Oh yeah. What happened to the real baby? Great question. His loving mother, Rhea, left him in a cave all by himself to be watched by a goat. Man, Greek parents are the worst. And with a little sleight of hand, Rhea stowed away her real baby, Zeus, taking him as far away from Kronos as she could, leaving him under the care and protection of his grandmother, Gaia. A bold strategy, leaving Zeus deep in the bowels of an empty cave. Zeus would be cared for by the nymphs who fed him milk from a magic goat. Days passed to months, months passed to years, and years faded into eons. And now that baby <laughs> is a big baby, a god, strong from all that goat's milk, and very much ready to leave his home and go abroad. Rhea had often come to visit Zeus and inform him of the terrible misdeeds of his father. He's a tyrant, Rhea said. A usurper, she whispered. A monster. And through Rhea's propaganda plan, Zeus came to hate his father, once again spinning the wheel of patricide, for another son would hatch another plan to dethrone another father. Uranus's curse was in full effect, but Zeus knew he must first free his siblings from the bowels of Kronos's bowels, who somehow, after all this time, had yet to digest them. Probably all those rocks, and so with Zeus now big and strong and ready for action, Rhea would arrange their meeting. O oh, Kronos, great and terrible lord, I bring you this beautiful gift, a royal cupbearer who most definitely, absolutely, is not your son. Yes, yes, bring the boy forth. Hmm, I do suppose my arms are getting quite tired from all that baby eating and ball slicing. Perhaps I'll allow it. Boy, give me that goblet in your hand. I grow parched from all this drivel. Here you go. Ooh. And maybe I'll come visit you tonight, if you know what I mean.
Damn it. The one time I didn't check for poison. Rhea and Zeus would poison Kronos, thus causing him to projectile vomit a new race upon the world. The gods, a powerful race, perhaps even powerful enough to contend with the mighty titans. And with Kronos incapacitated by the poison, Zeus hoisted the great scythe above his father's head, ready to deliver the final blow. But Kronos would not yet be undone, for the great diamond scythe forged in the bosom of Gaia could be wielded by Kronos and Kronos alone. It only heeded to his master's call. Oh, come on, you bitch, do it. Dog. <sighs> this guy is our leader. We're f Kronos would awaken from his restless slumber to find the gods gone. Zeus's hand had been stayed by fortune, and as Kronos came to his senses, a dread filled his belly, thousands of knots being pulled by the Hecaton Kiri, as he said, Oh, shit! As he realized he had a full-fledged rebellion on his hands, and from his children no less. And so, the Titanomachy would begin, the great war between the gods and the Titans. Kronos would appoint Atlas, the strongest and largest of the titans, to lead the charge, while Zeus would lead his siblings into battle. And for now, it was the calm before the storm, the breath before the plunge, for war was at hand. Hey! Titans rule and gods drool! <laughs> Dad is so immature. What should I call him? Call him a doo-doo head. Wait, no, 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 I got it, I got it. You look like a fucking testicle that's been... Yeah, well, you look like a testicle that's been stung by a thousand bees and then left in the sun for way too long. What did he say? He said you look like a testicle, sir. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Probably all those babies and hot pockets. And so, upon the back of Mother Earth, Gaia's children and grandchildren would battle for supremacy. God met Titan, and Titan met God. Boom! Bang! Ow! The destruction was magnificent. Volcanoes erupted, earthquakes shook, and whole islands were created. And the world would never be the same. Man, look at these wrinkles. Yet despite this devastation, the war lingered like a festered wound, and Zeus realized he needed an advantage. Being birthed directly from the primordial loins, the titans were mighty indeed, and so Zeus sought out other beings of the same lineage, for although the titans had greater strength stats, Zeus's charisma stats were off the charts, uh, probably all that goat's milk and this allowed him to recruit two titans to his side. Hey Prometheus, you want to come overthrow Kronos? Is the Pope Catholic? What's a Pope? I don't know. Prometheus and Epimetheus, who loathed Kronos' tyranny, would fight for the gods. But this still wasn't enough to tip the scales of victory, so Zeus turned his gaze to an even greater power. A forgotten power which lay dormant below the surface of the world, in Tartarus, the Underworld. Zeus would locate and parlay with the visually challenged Cyclopses and the disgusting, hundred-armed, hundred-headed Hecaton Kiri. Mighty Hecaton Kiri, I call upon thee. Freedom shall be yours if you but grant me your hideous faces and disgusting bodies. <laughs> what did he say? He said he wants unlimited pancakes. I don't know what pancakes are, but if we defeat Kronos, he'll have so many pancakes that He'll be sick of pancakes. 
Oh, and he wants unlimited bacon too. Okay, now he's just being greedy. And so a deal was struck. Zeus would free the Hecaton Kiri and the Cyclopses, who in thanks gifted him the mighty Thunderbolt, the nuke of the gods. And now it was time for hammer time, as Zeus began to rain hellfire upon the Titans, while the Hecaton Kiri overpowered them with their great strength and hideous faces. The war raged on for ten years, but but eventually, the gods would overthrow the Titans. Cronus's reign was over, yet the world had already paid the price, for the land seemed to have been taken by a biblical apocalypse, and Judgment Day had now come. Guilty! Cronus would receive the fate of his father, Tartarus, doomed forever to count the seconds to the end of days. The prophecy had come full circle, and ironically, Cronus' attempts to control fate only confirmed fate. Yet he wasn't the only titan to be punished. The mighty Atlas, strong and bold, would be assigned the Sisyphean task of supporting the world. And hopefully... He's better at that job than defeating the gods. And to the victors, the spoils reigned, for each god would be given a domain, a sacred region that they alone would rule. Zeus, as the eldest and the youngest, would be the leader, and naturally being the almighty, he would rule the skies, the heavens, taking the mighty thunderbolt as his weapon and the eagle as his sigil. Zeus was powerful, cunning, and charismatic, yet far from perfect. It would be more apt to consider him the god of infidelity, as his wandering eyes would bang everything and anything in sight. That god, this tree, that horse, it's pretty gross, but at least it leads to some pretty cool animals. Zeus? Hera, my one and only love. Spare me. Care to explain this? <laughs> I tripped and fell? You're a god. You can just fly. <laughs> yeah, I banged a horse. Next, Zeus would have to figure out what to do with his two brothers, Poseidon and Hades. Both played a critical role in the war and deserved powerful domains. The two choices? The seas and the underworld. And naturally, when faced with a critical decision of the utmost importance, the gods in their infinite wisdom just left it up to chance, drawing lots for their respective kingdoms. Yes! You Hades! Woo! Zeus would rule the skies, Poseidon the seas, and Hades the underworld. Mount Olympus would become the headquarters of the gods, a lofty peak for mortals to aspire to and die to. And of the other gods, each took a separate domain. There would be 12 main gods that would get into all sorts of misadventures and shenanigans. But that class is a story for another day. All right, John, you can come back in. Yeah, Zeus probably isn't changing him back.